So I'll uh, uh, take a step back from what I plan to uh, present uh, today, right? So last year I had uh, presented the declarative coexistence, right? And uh, a little bit of a quick background on the philosophy, right? So scenario one, as you all know, right, the virtual machines, which have been out there for decades, right? Now, as part of that, it has its own control plane or hypervisor, you want to call it, and it has its own infrastructure, right? Then I think six, seven years ago, we said, okay, now we are smarter. We have this containers and Kubernetes to orchestrate them. But that brought its own control plane. You can call it Kubernetes, but the definition of control plane can like get wider very quickly. And then, but it has its own infrastructure, right? So two parallels running out there, your applications workloads as virtual machines or containers, not talking about bare metals at the moment as a third scenario, but VMs, of course, they are also on bare metals. Containers, while they can run on VMs as workers, but underlying there's always a bare metal. I have an article if you'll find my, like Google my name on bare metal, Kubernetes, so on. Now, scenario three, is where you can actually bring in virtual machines and containers both together on a common control plane and a common infrastructure, right? And there's, there's several advantages in terms of consistency, be it your skills or storage or networking or the automation and the consoles, the command lines, your YAML configurations or if you're a developer and then all the CI, CD pipelines, one of our uh, friends just talked about it infrastructure as a code, the GitOps, pretty much most of the things can be applied to virtual machines as it can to the containerized ecosystem on a common control plane and infrastructure, right? So that's a quick background. My name is Vishal, I'm an, I am a CTO in IBM, uh, wearing two hats currently. One is the migration and modernization space. Another one is, the declarative coexistence, right? You'll find a lot of articles and uh, blogs that I have written yeah, um, on this declarative coexistence. I'm really, really uh, uh, moving forward in this space where I unify these two worlds rather than making like more, creating more fragmentations and separating it. And then you will realize with each in scenario, when you when you come to the operating model, it's a whole different style and whole whole different behavior, right? But with scenario three, I'm like moving towards converging and uh, unifying a lot of things. You'll see, right? Uh, so quick background on that philosophy, and then I'll quickly move to like another chart. Although the concept is coming from the CubeWare, and I'm gonna touch upon touch upon OpenShift, and I know it's an open group, uh, open source group. So as you know, Red Hat technologies are based on open uh, open source technologies, right? So underlying there's Kubernetes, the certified here and so on, right? So when you bring the open shift virtualization operator, which is one of the declarative uh, automation, pretty much open shift container platform makes it possible to run three types of workloads as like containers and serverless has been there out of the uh, Kubernetes platform. Now there's a virtual machine uh, as well, right? So, and think of managing uh, all those different types of uh, workloads or the the applications, uh, the, uh, virtualized, containerized, or serverless, pretty much on the same platform, right? So now, as a result, the second thing, well, we didn't, lot of things, right? We built several accelerators also, including the rehost that how we move the uh, virtual machines from legacy on-premises uh, environments to uh, open shift container platforms so that even the uh, virtual machine world can leverage the advantages of Kubernetes, right? So to do that, we have, we have brought in several accelerators and a lot of declarative automation. So one of that is uh, Tecton. So like in, in previous uh, session, one of our friends talked about the whole CI CD pipeline and all, and he, he beautifully explained the whole concept of containers and all. And I think like uh, most of us like understand the containers well pretty well, right? 
pretty well. We have gone much deeper. Of course, uh, improvement and the continuous uh, development uh, is is always there, right? So th that's that's where the world is moving in. Now, this declarative coexistence, where like I'm like personally excited and and built a lot of things, as I was saying. So in the first chart, the philosophy chart, as as you heard us talking about, a lot of common and unified things, right? Including, say, common um, uh, software-defined storage, uh, common software-defined networking, pretty much same for VMs and containers together uh, brings a declarative coexistence. So we've done done all that, like we've proven all the technologies and they're like those capabilities are out there already now to support like clients from various across industries. One thing that uh, I and my team uh, tackled sometime last year is this whole CI CD thing, right? So how do we bring in the VMs and containers both in a very Kubernetes native way of CI CD, right? And that's a whole different style. You know, uh, so you might have heard Jenkins and then Jenkins X was very exclusive to containers environment. Then the Tecton came, right? And the Tecton has its own uh, uh, intelligence and various advantages, yeah, and it integrates a lot of things. Now, I am going to talk about the Tecton pipeline and how it takes care of VMs on a container platform. So it's it's a whole different uh, level, and that's my talk is is all about today, right? So now, Tecton is is an uh, open source, as you might have heard. Like the uh, quick Google search can also go like like give you a lot of pages on this, right? So we're talking about pipeline, we're talking about the tasks, then within that, we're also talking about the task runs and so on, right? So on a high level. So pipeline is kind of where you are uh, putting the tasks in a very, tasks and jobs in a very disciplined manner with, with an intention of shifting left, right? So unless you have thousands of certain tests, just don't go and, uh, increase my blast radius, shift left, come again, and so on, right? So it's a whole discipline, and that discipline gets uh, executed in a very codified and a declarative manner, right? Now, the Tecton is an open source. The OpenShift pipeline is the, um, uh, the pipeline leveraging Tecton under the hood and is available as part of the operator hub on OpenShift Container Platform. I'll show you uh, in real as well. Uh, I have my cluster also uh, up and running in another window. So I'm gonna talk about OpenShift pipeline and then actually gonna show you the, the provisioning, for example, of a VM um, to uh, OpenShift Container Platform. Now, I also have like, a, uh, I have presented in one of the CNCF communities that how we can actually rehost uh, those VMs uh, to OpenShift. So if you Google uh, my name and zero touch declarative rehosting, you'll find the articles and even the YouTube uh, videos where I demonstrated how to do that. But today I'm not going to talk about rehosting. Um, I'm going to talk about provisioning of VMs using the Tecton or OpenShift pipelines, right? So, but just to give you more uh, high level details about pipelines, so it's, as I said, based on Tecton, it's declarative, CICD declarative. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure many of you or maybe all of you already understand, but quickly touch upon the word declarative, where it comes from. So on a high level, there are two types of automations, right? So one is the imperative automation, um, which is like, even if you create a script, right, uh, for a certain task, that's an automation, but that's an imperative automation, right? Because that is very specific for certain thing, but all the human knowledge for a specific thing has not gone into this so that, like, it cannot really handle certain variations uh, and permutations combinations. On the other, uh, I mean, in simple terms, the human intervention is still required with the uh, imperative automation, right? Now, when it comes to declarative automation, human knowledge is getting codified, really, right? So for a certain task or function, 
for example, say database installation or database upgradation or cluster upgradation, right? So when you deploy a declarative automation, you really, really want to rely on just one thing, which is one click, like click, that's all. Like humans do not have to think or, or like, um, and then apply their knowledge when it comes to execution. So that is the core meaning of declarative automation where you codifying the human knowledge of like of decades of human knowledge, right? Now, these pipelines run on OpenShift uh, container platform, and then you can pretty much do a lot of things when it comes to the CI CD, right? A lot of things can be done using command line interfaces, the web console, and there are certain plugins. There, there are certain uh, assets uh, already available, right? So now how it looks, so this is chart. But actually, I should show you all this in real. So I'll quickly move to my cluster where I'll show you that how uh, easy it is to first deploy the OpenShift pipeline and uh, how it runs and so on, and then how I'm using it for provisioning of VMs. But having said that, we have also taken the whole Tecton pipeline to the next level where you can even provision the Kubernetes clusters. And we have successfully provisioned OpenShift clusters also with Tecton, right? So it's a whole different way of uh, doing things. Of course, you can use many other things like infrastructure as a code. Even some, for many things, you can use Ansible playbooks and all, right? But uh, here, uh, there are different advantages. Now, coming to a very specific point of VMs on containers or on container platform, the open source technology is Kubert. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Red Hat had invented it, but it was like open source, then Kubert is like open source and the various uh, uh, players who uh, contribute to this. So Kubert is the actual technology which makes that VM and container run together. Now, Tecton, has Qvert specific tasks, right? So on the right side, you see uh, when you, um, and I'll show you in the cluster, right? So when you click on the tasks under the pipelines in the web console, there are certain tasks which are already there, developed by the open source community, very specific to VMs on a container platform to make that declarative coexistence possible to the next level, right? Now, a quick uh, view of how it looks. So you'll have pipeline builder and then you can further drill down onto details, click on it. It will show you more parameters and you can create the pipeline and then the tasks in it, as you see uh, some of the sample tasks that I put in on this chart. Uh, by the way, for, for now, I'm only talking about VM. So containers is like given, been there, done that kind of thing. So this is a whole new thing. Now. We, we created these VMs, we ran our applications, the VMs came up and the application also came up on the right side. So this is one of the sample applications we use in our lab environment, right? E-store, like pretty much like a, a e-commerce website, you have all the items to purchase and like move to the payment, pay it, and then check out kind of thing, uh, reference implementation, Java-based. Uh, using uh, Wildfly and uh, PostgreSQL as database and so on, right? So that was running in the VM. VM came up. The application also came up. Yeah. Now further, we can uh, uh, integrate this very easily with GitOps. So there's also a GitOps operator, by the way, right? So uh, GitOps brings that whole flow into the CI/CD. You can actually have the whole event triggering and pretty much the GitOps thing, right? That any change in in, in a particular state uh, triggers to certain action. So that's the simple definition, right? And of course, then there's a Git and repositories in, in, uh, in between there, right? Which is like part of whole CICD workflow, depending upon what you are trying to do, right? Now, I am now going to show you the real cluster, pretty much what I talked about is my, uh, you see my uh, uh, cluster that had OpenShift container platform. Julian, can you please confirm? Yes, yes, I yeah. see Red Hat. Perfect. 
Perfect, perfect. So this is my uh, OpenShift container platform, right? And um, uh, this is the operator hub. This is a very powerful uh, automation and, and Red Hat uh, brought this declarative automation and of course like through the core OS intelligence and whatnot, through core OS acquisition whenever that happened in the past. Now this operator hub has been incorporated into the container platform accessible through web console. As you can see, very powerful and very intuitive and uh, uh, simple uh, web console to use. What I mean by that is that you can like have the workloads, you can have networking, storage, pipelines, uh, user management, administration, compute, everything. Very cool uh, web console. But I'm not getting into the OpenShift container platform discussion yet. Uh, so Operator Hub, as you see, there are 568 uh, operators. Uh, just one click and you can install. There are several categories, as you can see, right? The databases, security, storage, and, and big data, and cloud providers, and so on. But Tecton, as I said, it's called OpenShift Pipelines because it's Red Hat supported. So in production, if there are any issues, then Red Hat is there to provide the support, yeah? Now, this is that Red Hat OpenShift Pipeline um, uh, operator that you see, that tile. As you see, installed, it shows. Uh, as usual, you just go click it and there's install button and that's all, right? So it it uh, uh, deploys right there from the operator hub, yeah? Now, since this operator is already installed, let's see which operators are installed in this, yeah. So there are two operators installed here. This is pretty much the declarative automation, right? And extending the Kubernetes API. You see GitOps is installed and uh, Red Hat OpenShift Pipeline is uh, installed uh, in this namespace. Now, uh, OpenShift virtualization is also installed uh, on this cluster, surely in some uh, different namespace, but of course from Operator Hub. And the reason I also want to show you that operator so that you can relate how VMs um, uh, can work here. So this is the operator which makes uh, VMs uh, up and running, right? So this is installed on a different namespace here. Um, then this is the migration operator to rehost from say source VMware to OpenShift and so on, right? Now, since the pipeline operator is installed, as a result, this pipeline section on the web console has appeared. And sure, we have created certain pipelines and all, right? And there are tasks. And um, so these are the task runs uh, that like in the past we have done it. Although you'll see most of the dates are like uh, very recent, wow, all today. So um, these were run today. Now I'm gonna run that uh, pipeline and you will see the virtual machine will get uh, provision. Now, let me go under workloads first to show you that if your containers, your containers are running here, they'll show under the pod, uh, under pods, and of course the workloads, then the VMs will appear here under virtual machines, right? So currently there's no virtual machine. Now let me just execute the Tecton pipeline and uh, let's see if it works. So I, if you notice what I did, I clicked on the pipeline, which is already created there, and I'm going to actions button and start, right? So now it is executing uh, those tasks. So it is creating the data volumes and then so here you see it's creating data volume, then it's creating say SSH keys for that. And it's then gonna create the VM from that manifest file, right? So let's wait for some time. So sure SSH keys are uh, generated is a whole YAML file and task is running. You can also see the logs and events right here. Uh, this is high level details, right? So let's go back to the workload section and see that whether pipeline 
is creating my VM or not, right? So it might take certain, uh, like few minutes, depending upon the size of the VM. I uh, don't remember the size, what has been put in here. So this is running and I executed like just a minute ago. So it's creating the data volume. So which means it is creating a PVC as well, right? So let's go to storage and see what PVC, right? So it looks like it has created the PVC here with 20 gig, uh, which is good. Uh, not, not interested in PV for now. Let's get back to the pipeline. And, uh, oh, what happened? Yeah, so it looks like it's been executed, yeah. Yeah, so it says succeeded two minutes ago, but do I have my virtual machine? Ah, there you go. So it has now provisioned a virtual machine for me here, right? And uh, corresponding, it must have created the uh, launcher pod as well, but this is my virtual machine. Now I did that using Tekton pipeline on my container platform, right? So let's see if this virtual machine is running. So I can get the console also from here and you can sure open console in a new window also. So yeah, if I remember, the username password. Ah, there you go. I remember the username password. That's it. So we created a Linux virtual machine like in two minutes, right? You can all like you can do all that in bulk as well. So I think I stop here. This is what all like I had to share for today. Yeah. So uh, just to summarize, we we saw the declarative uh, coexistence philosophy of bringing like two worlds together for several advantages in terms of consistency and convergence, the skills and the knowledge and technology and the operating models and so on. And then <clears throat> we we move to. Uh, pipeline and very specifically Tekton. And since Tekton is open source, then I showed you the uh, uh, production supported, like Red Hat supported uh, version, which is the OpenShift pipelines. Then we saw the actual demo of that pipeline. Using that pipeline, I just clicked on start because pipeline was already created for this demo purposes. And uh, we provisioned a VM on a container platform. So it's like another step towards declarative uh, coexistence and leveraging more containers and Kubernetes advantages for the virtual machine world on the same common container platform. That's what uh, I showed today. I stop here, thank you. Thank you very much. We showed it was interesting um, and, and very nice to see this live demo of yours. Um, I have a couple of questions. So first of all, how big um, is maybe the system that you are using on, on an operational basis, day by day, productively? So Julian, uh, can you say that again? So I was, I was saying, um, how big is the system that you use um, for your operation day by day? How many nodes, servers or something is there? Uh, this particular cluster, is it? Yeah. So th this particular cluster was really like uh, running with uh, uh, two worker nodes, but these two worker nodes are bare metal ones, right? And because like, if you bring VM, you you should have your cluster on bare metals because of, of course it's like then supported and then performance and so on. Besides every VM runs on a bare metal anyway. Even I have also proven that Kubernetes can never exist without bare metals. It never existed without bare metals. So that's another article. If you like Google my name and no Kubernetes and no bare metals, you'll find out. 
So back to your point that like two worker nodes as like bare metals uh, and, and this was really a demo lab environment where like I and my yeah. team like uh, dug yes. our hands and so on. I understand. In, in production, yes, in, in real world, yeah, in real world, you should have minimum three worker nodes. Uh, and if you have to bring VMs also, then those workers should be bare metal. So three, three workers, regardless, either as a VM or a bare metal, you should have. Yeah. And then, of course, then the whole conversation around sizing and capacity management, depending upon uh, which images you are bringing, which applications and the, the load and so on. Right. So that that varies from environment to environment. Yeah. And, and what is the kind of the production environment that you use as on manage at IBM? Let's say for typically, is it how many nodes are you? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, wherever there is bare metal, you can you can use this declarative coexistence. Predominantly, like uh, in uh, what has happened, that most of the bare metals have been on on premises, right? So, but if you have to get rid of like legacy virtual environment on premises and you still have some security and regulatory requirements you can repurpose those bare metals for this architecture so that's one one deployment model second ibm cloud like always had powerful bare metals right so you can use those bare metals also to leverage uh, this technology and uh, yeah 